key to answering the questions for infectious diarrhea is, is there blood or white cells in the stool, or is there no blood or white cells in the stool? When you see blank blank in the history, the answer is, when you see poultry in the history, then the answer is salmonella, chickens and eggs and eggs and chickens, it hasn't changed. Campylobacter, most common thing in the history will be Guillain-Barre. It's associated with Guillain-Barre, and you can't identify it to a particular food too easily. E. coli 015787. When you see hemolytic uremic syndrome, don't expect them to always say hemolytic uremic. They'll probably describe it to you. Say, hey, there's fragmented cells and low platelets and high BUN and creatinine. Fragmented cells and low platelets and high BUN and creatinine. The answer is most likely hemolytic uremic syndrome. And the second most common thing associated with the hemolytic uremic is Shigella. Shiga toxin does it too. So these associations are important, but they're not as important as the question, is there blood in the stool or white cells in the stool? Blood and white cells. Blood or white cells. Blood and white cells. Either one or both help you to know it's Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia, Vibrio parahemolyticus. That's how you know. So the individual presentation is more important than the history of what you ate. When you see shellfish in the history, the answer is most likely Vibrio valvnificus or Vibrio parahemolyticus. Shellfish, liver, and skin disease is Vibrio valvnificus. Now, liver disease in general Alcoholic cirrhosis, Wilson's disease, hemochromatosis predisposes you to Vibrio vulnificus. The Vibrio vulnificus causes both skin lesions. Hemochromatosis and blood transfusions, that one particular type of liver disease, Yersinia is frequently associated with that because Yersinia grows in cold like blood transfusions and also likes to eat iron. Antibiotics in the history and both white and red cells in the stool are associated with Clostridium difficile. And yes, antibiotic-associated diarrhea is invasive. The best initial test is blood or fecal leukocytes. So if they don't tell you, hi, I have blood in the stool, then look for occult blood with the stool guaiac test. If they don't tell you, oh, I saw blood in my stool, then do the fecal leukocytes. Now, it won't determine a specific organism, but... It will tell you that you're in the Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia, E. coli, Vibrio volumificus, Vibrio parahemolyticus group, the Salmonella campylobacter group. Stool lactoferrin. Well, I expect that some of you, this is the first time you're hearing this, and lactoferrin actually has greater sensitivity and specificity than stool leukocytes. Yeah, lactoferrin, if it's in the choice with fecal leukocytes, if it's one of the choices, it's actually a better answer than fecal leukocytes. Wowie gazowie! And of course, the most accurate is stool culture. How do we diagnose the etiology of diarrhea when there's no blood and no white cells in the stool. It could be viral, it could be giardia. Now in giardia you should be looking for a person who's on a camping or a hiking and unfiltered fresh water. Cryptosporidiosis is almost certainly exclusively in HIV and sometimes in outbreaks, but it's a sign of an opportunistic infection in very far advanced HIV. The test is an acid test stain, a modified acid fast stain. The most common wrong answer is expecting to see it on the ova and parasite exam. You cannot see it on the ova and parasite exam. Bacillus cereus is associated with vomiting, never has blood, never has fever. Staphylococcus is the same thing. These preformed toxins are associated with a mild self-limited form of vomiting and diarrhea. Scombroid is a histamine fish poisoning. It's very rapid in onset, and it's associated with wheezing and flushing and rash. It's found in fish, and you treat it with antihistamines, and it can happen 10 to 20 minutes after you eat it. What's the best initial therapy? Well, it depends on the severity of the disease. The best initial therapy for mild disease is simply oral fluid, Gatorade, um, salt, sugar, or liquid. Just water them, they'll be fine. Now, severe disease is treated with fluids and a quinolone, fluoroquinolone. 
ciprofloxacin. Now that's because at the time you're making the treatment decision, you never have the organism. So you can uh, talk about, gee, wouldn't it be great to use erythromycin for campylobacter? That's true. But how do you know it's campylobacter? You don't know. See, the problem with this is that uh, infectious diarrhea, when it gets taught by basic scientists, they teach you based on the time course. They say, oh, wow, two to six hours after you eat it, you get a staph aureus. And 12 and 24 hours, you get other infections. But how do you know when the thing is that you ate that caused the disease? You don't. All you know is, is there blood or no blood, white cells, no white cells, and the severity of disease. That's all you know. Blood, white cells, and severity. Severe disease basically means that you are hypotensive and tachycardic. You have a fever, abdominal pain. You have blood in it, metabolic acidosis, because the colon is a bicarb secreting organ. So if you have severe infectious diarrhea, it means that you have all of these things. And this is when you're going to give antibiotics. Now, you don't have to have every single one of them but you would have to have two or three minimum. Just having tachycardia or just having a fever is not enough or just having abdominal pain. And don't worry, it'll be clear. They'll give you a bunch of it and then you say ciprofloxacin or fluoroquinolone. Now, disease-specific therapy for the things not covered by the quinolones, such as Giardia, for instance, not covered by quinolones, metronidazole, tinidazole, well, this is why you have to know the diagnostic test because for Giardia, this ciprofloxacin and quinolones you'd use for empiric therapy won't cover Giardia. That's why you have to know. Open parasite exam, stool ELISA antigen. One stool ELISA antigen better than three open parasites for Giardia. Cryptosporidiosis, that's why you have to know about the acid fasting. Other than that, how would you know what to treat them with? Now, this is something that many people get wrong. Nidazoxanide is a specific therapy for cryptosporidiosis. You treat the underlying AIDS and nitazoxanide. Now this drug has been around for about three, four years at this point and is eligible. And also, now is it eligible, you will start to see it because this is a unique drug. For decades, we've never had a drug for cryptosporidiosis. Now we do. Nitazoxanide is how you squeak out your 265. There's no specific therapy for viral diarrhea, and neither is there for Staphylococcus nor Bacillus cereus. Just fluid support is needed, and that's it. Learn that nitrous oxide. Look it up. Become a 30-second genius.